Hey, welcome to this uh, week's YouTube where we'll be talking about a deer collar, wolf watch, and security cameras. Um, the deer collar is part of a little project we did with the U.S. Geological Survey. Uh, they have radio collar deer in the Superior National Forest and had uh, circumstances where wolves would kill the deer and cache the collar. So they were curious what the captive wolves would do with the collar. So we offered to test it for them by putting a radio, a radio collar on a, on a roadkill deer that we were going to feed. And we attached the collar securely. And interestingly enough, the wolves really showed very little interest in the collar. There's Denali actually trying to pick up the deer and roll it over so we can get to the internal cavity and get to the organ meat. And that's a pretty strong jaw that he's got there. Aiden's showing a little bit of interest in the collar right now, but just more or less sniffing it. It was on a wild deer, so uh, it uh, does have a little bit of a scent with it. And what's in the, interesting in this little particular little shot here, Denali's actively feeding, Aiden's actively feeding, Maya's uh, in there as well. Denali is a very aggressive animal when it comes to feeding. He has no, right, no, no difficulty uh, defending uh, food, and you actually see him circling and blocking Maya from coming near the carcass. He's actually got his hackles up. Um, and a little bit more of a threat display. And it's important to note that feeding behavior is a little bit independent than rank order behavior. Just because a wolf is aggressive on food doesn't necessarily mean that they're more dominant. Uh, rank order behavior, again, is the hierarchy that they play within the pack. There is a food possession rule within the wolf social structure. Regardless of your rank in the pack, you can guard and possess food. And that's what Denali's doing here uh, over Maya, who's clearly more dominant than he is, but respects that food possession right. That's likely evolved from uh, wolves who are pack feeders, who um, have multiple animals eating on one carcass. There was uh, bound to be some social rules that evolved out of that kind of a feeding structure. Lower-ranking wolves may tug and pull that part of a carcass, and once they get it and they possess it, they have the right to guard it and defend it from any other a member of the pack. You'll see Grizzer here standing back a little bit, not engaging um, in the feeding behavior at all. And again, that's not a rank order issue. That's pretty much Grizzer. Um, he used to be the one that was aggressive on the carcass before Denali and Aiden came in. And now he's uh, similar to Shadow in that he wants to avoid some of this conflict with some of the younger animals and not get into it with them just as soon wait for them to be done in order to feed. We do feed uh, a large amount of, of deer and uh, that's usually about 150, 180 pound deer so that there's ample resources for all wolves. Aiden's showing a little bit of interest in the collar, going to tug on it a little bit. Certainly some radio collars in the wild are found chewed upon by wolves, uh, both deer and wolf collars, meaning that the uh, wolves that are collared might have a litter mate or a pack mate that starts to gnaw on a little bit. Next thing you know the collar is chewed off and it's found in the wool in the woods with uh, no wolf attached to it and so that does happen. Um, again here's Grizzer approaching and Denali is going to here start to posture a little bit. He does a block just pushing Grizzer out of the way. Then he's going to actively follow through with a threat display. He tries to do a chin rest and Grizzer resists and he tries it again Again, Grizzer is going to do a little bit of threat display. Is not interested in having Grizzer uh, show dominance, or sorry, Denali show dominance over him. By the next morning, the carcass is down to this rib cage. Uh, that is all that's left out of that deer that you watched, and certainly um, uh, all wolves were well fed that night. This footage here is a little bit of the scene from uh, Wolf Watch. Uh, Wolf Watch is a program that we did initiate in order to help get a feel for what the pack's doing. Uh, one thing that we did discover is that evening observations without wolf care staff in the enclosure tend to be a little calmer than when wolf care do uh, wolf care in the mornings. Uh, the presence of the humans in the enclosure uh, makes a little bit of possessive behavior where wolves are guarding um, the staff or blocking um, other wolves from greeting the staff and so we did find a little bit more aggression. This was actually filmed during wolf care, and you're hearing a lot of growling from Maya, just walking around, asserting her position. Um, again, wolves use vocalization to make their point without being physical. So growling is not a bad thing. It's a way to say, you know what, I'm more dominant than you are, and uh, uh, vocalize that without having to be physical. 
One uh, interesting observation, and you can read all of the observers' comments in, at the wolf logs, but one inter interesting observation was that Denali and Grizzard do spend a fair amount of time together. Actually, for on Grizzard's point, about 95% of Grizzard's observations were with Denali. And those two still have a special kind of relationship. Uh, obviously, Aiden and Denali have the littermate bond, and uh, Grizzard and Denali have kind of a wrestling bond. Uh, those two spend a fair amount of time interacting um, physically they're equally matched and so Maya kind of stays out of some of those wrestling matches um, asserts her position again with a lip curl and a growl um, carries her tail high as a dominant female she's the only one really keeping order in this pack right now Grizzer doesn't seem to want to keep order um, he certainly uh, spends a fair amount of time again in, in social interactions, jaw sparring, wrestling, but he does have a tendency to get a little frustrated with uh, Denali and might do a whirl or a spin around and kind of lunge at Denali. Denali is a little powerful and Denali is trying a lot of things and this is like say two-year-old testing behavior, certainly not anything that we haven't seen before. Um, Grizzer was a two-year-old at one time. The remainder of the YouTube, I thought we would show you some of the day in the life of a retired pack. And this is footage that's taken right from the security cameras. Uh, we do have a 24-hour uh, low-light security system on this enclosure so we can see what's going on. This is Malik um, getting up at about 5.16 a.m. All the video that's shot is motion censored and it has a... A timer, so it tells us exactly what time they get up in the morning. He's doing a four uh, half stretch there, meaning four with his four legs and his back legs, so a typical morning stretch. Shadow's still sleeping in a little bit, and so that is something that you know we can monitor just by watching the video cam. How much are they sleeping? Is there any preference uh, for where they're sleeping? That type of thing. Other uh, things that we look for is maybe any kind of stress activity that happens in the middle of the night. Um, uh, what's their association? Are they spending time together? And uh, We do see these two have no problems um, sleeping in close proximity, inches away from each other, whereas the younger wolves get a little bit uh, uh, testy if uh, another wolf is too close to them. Um, if they're touching each other, that seems to be an issue with the younger wolves. Shadow and Malik are getting along very well. Um, they have no problem sleeping in close proximity to one another. This is the opposite side of the day. This is actually uh, footage at 8.46 p.m. They're already in bed. Um, and again, one of the benefits of retirement is that you get to sleep and sleep soundly without the problems of younger animals. This is a little bit later footage that night. So uh, probably about 9, I think the tape was 9.16. So 8.46, Shadow went to bed, and here's Malik coming of, of you know half an hour later. One of the other questions we get a lot is, how do wolves deal with thunderstorms? And this is a footage uh, that was taken uh, a few nights ago when a thunderstorm lightning moved through. And you can see the flashes of lightning. You'll see uh, Malik laying right in the den, really showing no signs of even being bothered by it. So that's the day in the life of retired wolves. Um, sleeping is what they do. Uh, if it's cool early in the day, they, they'll typically be on top of the den. If it's hot... We will uh, try to help cool them off. We've got sprinkler systems on both enclosures. And here you, go, you see the sprinkler system uh, going, and the wolves are going to walk underneath it, try to get a little bit of uh, water on their coats, and then may do a shake to cool themselves off. But it, in addition, just you know, physically um, dripping on them and getting them wet, it does cool off the pavement, and that helps keep it cool. But for the most part, um, like I say, very relaxed. Uh, this is a shot... Uh, while the main pack is fed, the exhibit lights are on, and so for a short period of time at night, you can actually see good lighting, and that's on a Saturday night for the What's for Dinner program. So the main pack's eating, they're resting, and everything's good. Thanks for watching.